गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दी वर्टेक्स डिस्ट्रॉइंट पाथ एंड एज डिस्ट्रॉइंट पाथ एंड वील सी हाउ फोर्ड पुलकसन एल्गोरिथम हेल्प अस इन कंप्यूटिंग दी मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ वर्टेक्स एज वेल एज एज डिस्ट्रॉइंट पाथ सो रिकॉल दैट इनिशियली वी आर डिस्कसिंग दैट सोवियत यूनियन वॉन्ट टू स्टडी द मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ ट्रेन ट्रैक्स दैट आर नीडेड टू डिस्ट्रॉय टू प्रिवेंट एनी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम एशियन साइड टू द यूरोपियन साइड so this problem gives birth to the concept of edge disjoint paths so two paths are edge disjoints if they have no arc in common and we need to find the maximum number of edge disjoint st paths let us consider the following example so quickly try to compute the maximum number of edge disjoint paths from s to t it's very easy to observe here that this is one path this is the other one and this is the third one so three paths are clearly visible and they are the and that means that there are three edge disjoint paths let's try for this graph again the graph is not difficult and you will observe that it comes to but the question is that i need if i need an algorithm to compute the maximum number of edge disjoint paths then what would be the algorithm or in the other words if i ask that how ford fulkerson algorithm can be used to compute the maximum number of edge disjoint paths from s to t let's consider this example the answer is quite easy so what you do is that you give capacity 1 to all the edges and then compute the maximum flow if the maximum flow is 3 it means there are three edge disjoint paths in the given st network from s to t yes so it's quite easy and the next question is describe an algorithm that finds the minimum number of edges that no that need to be removed from g so that there is no path from s to t so the simple observation is that if the maximum paths are let's say k and if you delete one edge from each path then the graph would be disconnected it means at least k edges are required so here is the example if you delete these three edges then you can see there is no path from s to t this leads us to the menger's theorem which says that maximum number of edge disjoint uv paths is equal to minimum number of edges that needs to be removed from g to disconnect u from t the other version of the menger's theorem says that a graph is k edge connected remember that k edge connected means if you delete less than k edges then the graph is still remains connected for example if i draw this one then this is one edge connected this is not two edge connected because if you delete one edge the graph is disconnected but this graph is two edge connected because if you delete one edge the graph is still remains connected but this is not three edge connected so a graph is k edge connected if and only if there are at least k edge disjoint paths between each pair of vertices so if there are k edge disjoint paths it means from the above theorem minimum k edges are required to disconnect the graph it means if you delete less than k edges the graph is not disconnected and which means it is k edge connected the next is the vertex disjoint paths so consider the same example and try to compute the edge disjoint paths as well as the vertex disjoint path it's easy to observe that there are three edge disjoint paths here 1 2 and 3 but only two vertex disjoint paths now how do we use the ford fulkerson algorithm 
to compute the number of the vertex disjoint path or maximum number of the vertex disjoint path think over it the idea is not very difficult so here comes the idea which says that break every vertex into this form v in and v out yes and then when we look for the edge disjoint paths you can see that some edge which is going in and the edge is going out from here and because of this when we look for the edge disjoint paths these two vertices are different because once you include one is going in and one is going out and because of that in the end you will have the uh, vertex disjoint paths it would be more clear once we do an example but this is the idea you break every vertex as v in and v out it means the edges should go into v in and they must go out of v out then in the modified graph you apply the Ford Forkelser algorithm by giving capacity 1 to every edge. Compute the number of the edge disjoint paths. In the original graph, they give the number of the vertex disjoint paths. So, this is the idea that in the modified graph, if a path is like this, then in the original graph, it would like this. Yes, and since again I told you that there is an edge V in and edge is going out of V out, therefore there are not two vertices in common in those edge disjoint paths. It would be more clear once we do this example. So the question says use Ford Fulkerson algorithm to compute the maximum number of vertex disjoint paths from S to T. So if you apply it, then first you have break every vertex into V in and V out. It's clearly visible here. Now you can see that, for example, this is one in and this is one out. Then any edge is coming into one in and it is going out of this one. For example, this is three in, three out. Then from three out, you are going into 4 in and 4 out. Yes, then you compute the edge disjoint paths, which looks like this. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4 edge disjoint paths. And these edge disjoint paths becomes vertex disjoint in the original graph. Therefore, the original graph has 4 vertex disjoint paths. So same we can talk about the Menger's theorem for the vertex version which says that maximum number of vertex disjoint paths is equal to minimum number of the vertices that need to be removed from G to disconnect U from B and G is K connected if and only if it has at least K vertex disjoint path. So this is a very interesting question where we have to use the Menger's theorem to prove it. It says that let G is 5 connected, it has 3 vertices A, B, C. Then G must contain 2 cycles having only A and B in common, only A and B in common and neither of which contains C and these 2 cycles should not contain C. Please do try this question by yourself, very interesting question. So it means that I have given G is 5 connected which means there exist at least 5 vertex disjoint paths disjoint paths between every pair of the vertices U and V. So if you consider G minus C so it may be possible that C belongs to one of the path between U and V. So for sure, or it may not belong. So for sure, G minus C is at least four connected, which means there exist at least four vertex disjoint paths between any vertices U and V. This is the most important part. 
G is 5 connected, at least 5 disjoint paths is there. G minus C, because C may belongs to one of the path joining any two vertices U and V. Or it may not belong, but let's say it belongs. Then G minus C would be at least 4 connected. It means if you consider any two vertices A and B, then there are 4 paths between A and B. P1, P2, P3 and P4. Now it's clearly visible that P1, P2 forms a cycle C1 where only two vertices are common because these two paths are vertex disjoint. If they are edge disjoint, there may be more vertices in common. But because of the vertex disjoint, similarly P3, P4 forms C2. So C1, C2 are two cycles having only two vertices A and B in common and since these two cycles belong to G minus C, they do not contain C. So that's all from today's class. In the next class, we will start a new chapter. Thank you.